Hey, we are on our installation rules part 9, where we talk about special installations or locations, section 7.2, swimming pools, paddling pools, ornamental pools, spas, and fountains. So, in general, firstly, the particular requirements of this subclause apply to the basins of swimming pools, paddling pools, ornamental pools, outdoor spas and fountains. The requirements also apply to the surrounding zones of all these basins in these areas in normal use. The effect of electric shock is increased by a reduction in body resistance and contact of the body with earth potential. If a spa is installed as a fixed installation, all associated equipment, electrical and mechanical, shall be protected by a barrier. Note 1. This subclause applies where people can touch electrical equipment in a swimming pool, paddling pool, ornamental pool, outdoor spa and a fountain. If a spa is installed indoors, the provisions relating to bathroom shall apply. Note 2. Special measures, such as equal potential bonding in the water of an ornamental pool, might be needed where motors are used. Note 3. In the case of swimming pools for medical use, special requirements might be necessary. See section 7.7, .7, which is your medical installations. So, zones. In general, for the purposes of this part of SANS 10142, Areas in and around swimming pools, paddling pools, ornamental pools, spas and fountains are divided into zones 0, 1 and 2. The boundaries of these zones are indicated in figures 7.2.1, 7.2.2, 7.2.3 and requirements are based on the dimensions of the zones. So we'll have a look at the zones later. There's some drawings up. Zone zero. Zone zero is the interior of the basin, including any recess in the walls or floor and of the basin for foot cleaning. Zone one. Zone one is limited by zone zero, a vertical plane two meters from the rim of the basin, the floor or surface expected to be occupied by persons and the horizontal plane 2.5 meters above the floor or the surface. When a swimming pool has a diving board, a springboard, starting blocks, a suit, or other components expected to be occupied by persons, zone 1 also comprises the zone being limited by a vertical plane situated 1.5 meter around the diving board, springboard, starting blocks, shoot, or other components such as accessible sculptures and decorative basins, and the horizontal plane 2.5 meters above the highest surface intended to be occupied by persons. Zone 2. Zone 2 is limited by the vertical plane external to zone 1 and a parallel plane 1.5 meters from zone 1. The floor or the surface intended to be occupied by persons and the horizontal plane 2.5 meters above the floor or the surface. There is no zone 2 in the case of fountains. The dimensions are measured taking account of the edge of the container, the walls and fixed partitions. See figure 7.2.1 to 7.2.2 and 7.2.3. Like I said earlier, we'll have a look at that. Then protection for safety, excluding accessories. Note, the following requirements do not apply in the case of circuits not exceeding 12 volts in zone 1. So protection by safety extra low voltage. Where safety extra low voltage is used, whatever the nominal voltage, protection against direct contact shall be provided by barriers or enclosures that provide a degree of protection of at least IP2X in accordance with SAN 60529, 
or insulation that can withstand without breakdown a voltage of 500 volts AC for one minute. Note the IP ratings I explained in Annex G. Protection against electric shock. The only measures permitted for providing protection against electric shock in zone zero is the use of safety supply that operates at a nominal voltage not exceeding 12 volts and that has its source outside the zone. The measures of protection by means of obstacles, placing equipment out of arm's reach. Non-conducting locations or earth-free equipotential bonding to provide protection are not permitted. Supplementary equipotential bonding. All accessible conductive parts in zones 0, 1 and 2 that may become alive accidentally, though not form normally forming part of the electrical circuit, shall be bonded with a local supplementary equipotential bonding conductor except where the conductive parts are protected by insulating, covering, or is otherwise enclosed. The resistance of the earth continuity circuit shall not exceed 0 0.2 ohms. Selection and erection of electrical equipment. Degrees of protection against ingress of water is installed in installed electrical equipment. Electrical equipment shall have at least the following degrees of protection against ingress of water in accordance with SAN 60529. In zone 0, IPX8. In zone 1, IPX5, IPX4 for swimming pools inside buildings which are normally, which are not cleaned by means of jets. In zone 2, IP22 for indoor locations, IPX4 for outdoor locations, IPX5 where water jets are likely to occur for cleaning purposes. Note the IP ratings are explained in Annex G as we said before. So wiring systems. Cables shall comply with SANS 1507 and not have exposed metal armoring. Wiring may consist of single core cables in insulated conduits or of multi-core cables with an insulating sheath. In zones 0, 1 and 2, wiring systems shall be limited to the wiring systems necessary for the supply of appliances situated inside such zone. The shortest possible route shall be used. In a circuit in zone 0 or zone 1, there shall be one appliance only. No junction boxes for voltages exceeding 12 volts and only conduits of insulating material. Switch gear and accessories. There shall be no switch gear or accessories in zone 0 and 1. In zone 2, any socket outlet or switch shall be supplied individually by a class 2 isolating transformer that is installed outside the zone and that operates at the nominal voltage not exceeding 50 volts or protected by an earth leakage protection device that has an, a rated earth leakage stripping current or rated residual current not exceeding 30 milliamps. Water pumps. Accessible extraneous conductive parts. All accessible extraneous, con extraneous conductive parts associated with a water pump motor shall be bonded to the earth continuity conductor. These parts include the suction pipe, delivery pipe, and pump casing. Submersible pumps. Unless otherwise authorized, a submersible pump shall be fed from a circuit breaker protected by an earth leakage protection device with a rated earth leakage stripping current not exceeding 30 milliamps or a class 2 isolating transformer. The transformer shall have a maximum open circuit voltage of 250 volt single phase or 440 volt three phase. If the pump is used in an ornamental pool of fountain or 12 volts if used in other applications. If the supply cable has an earth continuity conductor, the conductor shall be connected to the installation earthing system. Any mechanical protection provided for the cable shall extend below the minimum water level the cable shall be firmly fixed to the pump and there shall be an effective water seal. 
non-submersible pumps. A motor for a non-submersible pump shall be fit from a supply or protected by an earth leakage protection device. There shall be bonding between the pump casing, the motor frame, metal suction and delivery pipes at the pump and the earth continuity conductor. This bonding shall be visible. The pump and its associated equipment shall be kept dry and ventilated. Portable water pumps. The supply to a portable water pump that operates at a voltage of more than 50 volts shall be a safety supply or have earth leakage protection or have a safety arrangement that has been approved. Luminaires. A luminaire that is underwater or within 2.5 meters of the water surface also situated that a person has to go into the water to service it shall be fed from a transformer that is out of arms reach from zone 1 and is a class 2 isolating transformer with a maximum output voltage of 250 volts if the luminaire is used in an ornamental pool of fountain or 12 volt if the luminaire is used anywhere else or is an isolating transformer or double wall transformer with a maximum output voltage of 12 volts and is protected by an earth leakage protection device that has a rated leakage stripping current not exceeding 30 milliamps. In the case of ELV luminaire, the installation shall comply with 7.9. In the case of a luminaire mounted below or next to the water level of a pool, the cable shall be a non, in a non-metallic duct or conduit and armored cable shall not be used. Underwater luminaire shall comply with SAN 60598-218. Appliances. Zone 0, each appliance shall be supplied by a safety supply that operates a nominal voltage not exceeding 12 volts. Zone 1, each appliance shall be supplied by a safety supply or, if fixed, be of a class 2 construction or shall be supplied by a circuit that is protected by an earth leakage protector device that is out of arm's reach from Zone 1. Zone 2, unless supplied by a safety supply, each appliance shall be of class 2 construction or of class 1 construction and protected by an earth leakage protection device that has a rated earth leakage stripping current or rated residual current not exceeding 30 milliamps or supplied by an isolating transformer. Heating units. Unless the heating unit operates from a safety supply, any heating unit embedded in the floor of zone 1 or zone 2 shall be covered with an earth metallic grid or an earth metallic sheath connected to supplementary equitential bonding. A fixed water heater for a swimming pool or spa shall be installed in the same way as a non-submersible pump in the water circulating system and not in the swimming pool itself and with the supply to the elements and the circulating pump interlocked. Other equipment. An item of equipment other than a pump and a luminaire shall not be used unless it is method of installation have been authorized. So here we can see the elevation of zone dimensions for swimming pool and paddling pools. As we said there, uh, zone 1 is 2.5 meter high and horizontally 2 meters from where zone is inside the basin, zone 0 inside the basin and next to your zone 1 you've got the 1.5 meter zone 2 which height is also 2.5 meters and also where there is a, a diving board 2.5 meters height your zone 1 and also 1.5 meter from the diving board at that 
2.45 new died. Uh, similar, this one is uh, for an above ground pool. So from the inside of the basin or the top of the basin there, 2.5 meters, 2, 2 meters to the side horizontally, and then zone 2 next to that 1.5 meter on each side. And here you can see the zone 1 goes right around the zone 0. 2 meters and 1.5 meters from zone 1 is your zone 2. 